All right, back to some of today's breaking news. President Claudine Gay is officially out at Harvard. It is time now for the other view. Well, the embattled Harvard president not taking the blame in her resignation letter, saying she has become the victim of personal attacks and threats fueled by racial animus. Joining us now to discuss this is Outreach Director for the California Family Council and former college athlete Sophia Laurie, Project 21 member, political analyst Whitley Yates, and CUNY Professor of Law Jeffrey Lacks. Uh, Jeffrey, I'm going to start with you here. Uh, I'm a Harvard alum and so many fellow alums are texting me saying, yes, that's great. It's overdue. They should have done it right out of the gate after that horrible testimony. They shouldn't have let it drag on. And now they seem to be blaming it on racism. Your thoughts? What a disgrace. I mean, Harvard looks worse today, in my opinion, than it did when the testimony first occurred. Because what it, it seems like the standard is, what, 49 plagiarism examples? And then once you get to 50, then you're out? So this had nothing to do with the anti-Semitism. This had nothing to do with the way her students were treated on her campus. Only when it got to the point where they were overwhelmed with Harvard looking so terrible for so many reasons did they pressure her into this. Obviously not about racism. It's obviously about the fact that she has no moral compass whatsoever and has no academic compass, frankly, either. So I think Harvard looks terrible. They should have fired her when she walked out of the room that day of Congress. It's a shame that they didn't. But at least the right thing in the end happened that she's no longer the president of one of what used to be and I know that you went there, um, you know, one of our greatest universities. Right. You know, Whitley, it's interesting because, again, uh, she, Claudine Gay, resigned. And we don't know what happened behind the scenes. But I'm reading a letter that uh, Harvard students and alums received from the Harvard Corporation. That's the most powerful body at Harvard. And it actually reads like a eulogy. Uh, as if this woman no longer exists, and their only explanation, uh, they start out with, it is with great sadness that we announced, and we only accepted her resignation because of the racial vitriol and the threats that she received. Um, so again, not even addressing the plagiarism that Jeffrey mentions, certainly not even addressing the anti-Semitism that started this disastrous problem, and again, just trying to completely rewrite history. We see that happening a lot. What's interesting is that this really began when students, specifically Jewish students, were the victim on Harvard's campus. And this administration, hers in particular, did absolutely nothing about it. And so to allow anti-Semitism to not only grow, but to continue to fester on this campus and then to sit in front of Congress and double down on that type of behavior was insufferable for me to watch. But then we have the lingering plagiarism that was, you know, 49 plus times. And the fact that she stayed in her tenure, she stayed at this university, costing them somewhere up to a billion dollars in donations is deplorable. And the fact that it took this long, but now she has become the victim and not the students who had succumbed to the anti-Semitism and the calls for genocide against them is really just saddening that that was the position that they took. I'm glad that she's gone, but the way in which they executed this was very piss poor. And interestingly enough, many people have said that Claudine Gay was simply a DEI requirement gone wrong at Harvard. Uh, that also from some of the people who she did plagiarize, who happened to be black women as well. Uh, Sophia, Whitley did mention the money and the donations and all of those things. And of course, Harvard known to widely be the most wealthy or one of the most wealthy universities. But all of a sudden, when you have those billionaire donors saying, I'm pausing until you get rid of this person, it seems that maybe there were other motives in their reason for accepting her resignation. Well, absolutely. Money talks. So when those millionaires and billionaires that donate are going to stop giving money because of the anti-Semitism that came out of Claudia Gay, it, it makes sense. They need to get rid of her because it's going to be a downfall for the whole school because of one person's actions. And how you mentioned the DEI, that's exactly what we're seeing happen. People that aren't necessarily qualified for jobs are getting jobs because of DEI. 
we want the most qualified people, no matter your race, no matter your gender, to be in positions because of your qualifications. And we're seeing here, to your point, Sophia, that Claudine Gay simply was not qualified, not based on her over 40 whatever counts of alleged plagiarism, many which she even addressed, but also the fact that she really couldn't handle the university when something terrible happened. Also, just want to let everyone know, a gentleman by the name of Alan Garber has been put in as the interim president. He's a provost and chief academic officer, so they do have someone interim in the interim who will be there. But again, lots to discuss in this story, and I'm glad they finally did the right thing, I will say, but I think it's a little bit too late, and they're spinning that narrative, and I bet it's only going to get worse, especially on regular media and progressive media. Sophia Laurie, Whitley Yates, Jeffrey Lax, thanks so much for being with us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.